Tonight on The Prophet. I'd like to get some fun. Oh, I love fun. Hold my hand, pulse. Switch back up. That's the fun part? At a women's activewear company based in Los Angeles, the owner only sees things in black and white. I do what I want, kind of like what I would want to wear. And what if you wanted to come up with a printed fabric? I would never do printed. Maggie Montiel found early success by building a multi-million dollar company completely online. It does really well, and it sells. Now her conservative aesthetic is starting to lose popularity. This looks a little mommy to me. If you really made a point of being like the one that had the fashionable bras, women need that. Dealing a blow to her bottom line, revenue went down pretty significantly, right? Yes. And yet she still doesn't want to take the risks to adapt to the latest trends. I don't think I would call myself a rebel. What would you call yourself? Safe. Even if that's what the customers want. You need to be more aggressive with the style of the right. leggings. No. If I can't get this owner to think creatively. I like the shape, I like how it fits a waistline. It's really mediocre. Thank you. Her beloved fashion brand may go out of style forever. Honestly, I wouldn't take any of that. None of it. My name is Marcus Limonis, and I risk my own money to save struggling businesses. We're not going to wake up every morning wondering if we have a job. We're going to wake up every morning wondering how many jobs we have to do. It's not always pretty. Everything's going to change. Everything. But I do it to save jobs, and I do it to make money. This, let's go to work, is the profit. The athleisure industry has exploded in the last several years. And what appeals to me about Montiel is that it broke through the clutter and quickly gained a following. It's only been around since 2013, so I'm heading over to the company's warehouse in downtown LA to learn more. Hello? Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm Marcus. <laughs> Maggie, nice to meet Maggie, you. Maggie, nice to meet you. Thank you for Kiera. coming. Kiera. Kiera? Yes. That's a cool name. Thank you. Cambria. How are you? Another yeah. cool name. Yeah. Everybody's got nice names. <laughs> are you guys all wearing the product? Yes. 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 We are. We are. <laughs> we live in Interesting. it. Interesting. So I so wear it like every single day, like yeah. to work out in. It's just, it's perfect. Yeah. Athleisure is really the new denim. Totally. You know, right. once you go leggings, you don't really get back into your jeans. Are you trying to hurt my jean business? No, no, no. I wear them on the weekends. On, on the weekends. On the weekends. On the weekends. Do weekend. not mess up my jean business. <laughs> so what exactly do you guys do? So we make women's activewear. Okay. Um, bras, camis, leggings, stuff like that. We do all the manufacturing and everything in San Diego. So it's all made in the USA. I use a contractor. Oh, you do? Uh, but I order all the materials to make mm -hmm. it. And they cut and sew it. Can I see some pieces? Yeah, of course. I want to see what the top sellers are. Definitely oh, our teardrop. teardrop. Bra. Yeah. This is our number one seller. This is the number one seller in the company? Yeah. yeah. That's the one that I started with. Wow, this feels really nice. Right now, I have on the Reagan. Which one is that? This that one? one? In black. What do you like about that? I think the straps. OK. These are the Leah leggings. <laughs> How much is, um, stretch is in here? There's about 5% spandex. Yeah, it does feel nice. As I look at the products that Maggie makes, I would say that from a quality standpoint, they're superior. And you put a nice grain in it. It's yes. our special blend. But they seem very plain. How many different colors overall in your whole collection? Nine, 10. And what if you wanted to come up with a printed fabric or a different color? I would never do printed. I think it's a little cheesy. When I think of prints and stuff like that, they're more fads. So who created this? Me. I kind of got a little bullied with that one because everybody was doing color blocking. I don't think I would want to be seen in that. My sister loves them. It, it, I get the sense, and I'm totally reaching here, that if you don't like it, it just doesn't sell. It's kind of easy when it's your line. You can kind of control that. And so how do you innovate? I, I do what I want. You know, kind of like what I would want to wear. It's obvious to me that Maggie makes products that she likes and that fit her personality. Oh, is this your lookbook? Yeah. The only thing it doesn't show me is how I could use the product. And what's puzzling to me is the presentation of it. I don't see any diversity in terms of activity, not even riding a bike or jogging. The usage of the product feels a little one-dimensional. If you like to do a particular activity or wear a particular color, and Maggie doesn't have it, it's almost like she's telling you, go shop somewhere else. 
who actually designs. So I, I do the design. What I do is I come here in the morning. I usually arrive before them, and I get so much done before they come. See, I'm like, so weird because I can't have noise. I can't work with noise at all. And I go and I do the rest of my work from home in silence. It's really weird. No, we, we just sit here and talk to each other all day. And Let me just see if I can understand this again. You come here early in the morning mm -hmm. and nobody's here, yeah, you work. Sorry. And then as soon as humans come around, you leave and you go work at home where there's nobody. Exactly. Maggie actually reminds me of a girl that used to sit next to me in grade school, who used to always shush me. I would describe Maggie's personality as introverted, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're gonna lead a business, you're gonna have to somehow get out of your shell. Direct to consumer only. Yes. And trunk shows. No trunk shows. And we don't do wholesale. That's it, online, no other way to buy it. As of now, yeah. Buy it from you or don't buy it at all. Right. Well, and, and we did that wow. because I wanted to offer a better price. So I wanted to charge 38 bucks for this and not $58. Right. It seems problematic to me that Maggie only sees value in selling online. And while I'm in favor of the bulk of her revenue coming from that channel, it's helpful for a business to just think differently and not think so one-dimensional. What prompted you to open this? I it kind of fell in my lap. My dad's been in the industry. Your dad was in this business or just yeah, in the fashion in the business? Yeah, in the apparel business. In the apparel business. Yeah, for 40 plus years. Really? What did he do? He did Ashworth, golf apparel. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so my dad was liquidating one of his lines, and it was a ladies' activewear line, but it was more towards an older demographic. So I helped him liquidate the company, and I was doing trunk shows, and I went to my dad. I'm like, how can I make this bra? in a ton of different colors, and that's where it started. When did you start this? November 2013, and that was in my two-bedroom apartment. So how many team members, just the three of you? So for the office, it's the three of us. And your dad's still involved in the business? Yeah, he's our CEO. Why he are you the CEO? Because I think that having somebody who's been in the business and knows what he's doing and has taken other companies public is really important because at that time, I wasn't qualified to be a CEO. I wasn't qualified to be a president at the time. On first blush, it seems like a good idea that, that Maggie has really acquiesced the CEO title to her father who has years of experience in this industry. But to use him as the CEO feels a little like a cop-out to me. And so social, who drives social? Me. You do? You do, you do it all yourself? Mm -hmm. I did all of my advertising through Facebook. Uh, and I got in at a really sweet spot. I had sales right away and I had people following us like really fast. I think it's very smart that you did that. Thank you. <laughs> Seems like a great Instagram product as well. Yes, it is. But How much yeah. inventory in total? There's about 24,000 units in here. And what does that equate to in dollars? It's about 250,000. What were you doing in uh, cost of goods for the year? Like 44%. So how much revenue will you do? Sales, we did 1.8. The year before, we did 2.1, so we dipped. Customers, they're just not coming back. Do you ever change your mindset and come up with new things? I have no interest in that. Uh-huh. I feel like I have a lot of pressure on me, and... and Who, where's the pressure coming from? Myself. I want to be successful for my parents. I don't sleep. I, it was worse when I was younger. I've kind of gotten control of the anxiety part. Well, Are you happy started. now? No. Why not? not? Because now I'm worried. <laughs> now I'm worried. Would you have fun, okay, please? Okay, well, all right. I'm trying. <laughs> Anytime I go into a business, I have to really early on determine what my process is going to be like with the business owner. Am I going to have to be very tough? Am I going to have to be aggressive? Am I going to have to be persuasive? In the case of Maggie, giving her opportunities to try things without fear of failure or without any consequences to that failure may be a better path. Maggie told me that her father is actually the CEO, and so I thought it'd be a good idea for us to meet before we sat down and had any more discussions. So we're gonna meet at the Cut and Sew factory in San Diego. How are, how are you? I'm Marcus. I'm Jerry, Marcus. Jerry, how are you, sir? I'm good, nice it's to meet you. It's a real pleasure to meet you. My pleasure. She wanted to get in when she was about 10 years old, and she wanted to make clothes when she grew up. Because her dad made them. Yes. <laughs> I was running around in Ashworth as a kid, up and down as they were sewing, it was like, yeah. Can we get a tour of this place? Absolutely. Sure. This place is cranking, isn't it? This is a great shop. I mean, wow. These people have just been fabulous amazing. for us. And so once it leaves here, it's bagged and tagged. And it comes to LA. I'm impressed with the type of capacity that is available to her at her cut and sew operation. What it tells me is that if the business explodes, we're not gonna have a problem on the manufacturing side. Hi. This is Sally, Sally Hi, I'm Marcus. Marcus. She does all the patterns. 
So this is where we do all of our cutting. I buy my fabric, it gets shipped here. So he's holding our fabric as well. Do you think her personality and the product are similar? Yes. 